Hey, this is Terry Toots with a quick tutorial on recreating the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, in Terrigen. The Northern Lights are an awe-inspiring sight, and with some specific cloud settings and warp shaders, we can capture just a little bit of that awesomeness in Terrigen. We'll start out in the default scene, where the first thing we're going to do is make this atmosphere box quite a lot larger, and add a layer of version 2 clouds. These should render faster than version 3 clouds for what we're doing here. The general idea is that we'll take a wavy slice from this cloud layer to make our aurora. First, we'll tweak the settings a bit, increasing depth, localizing the cloud, and decreasing the edge sharpness and cloud density. We'll also bring the coverage up a lot so that we have one solid mass of clouds to work with. Next, we're going to slice our cloud. We'll do this with a simple shape shader connected to the final density modulator input of the cloud layer. We'll make this long and skinny. And let's go ahead and rotate it a bit so we can see it from the side. Switch the edge profile to smooth step with 100% edge width so that the slice fades in nicely from the sides. Now we should have a clean slice through the clouds. Next, we're going to add some waves to this by adding a fractal warp shader after the simple shape shader. The default settings actually look pretty good here, but you can mess with them if you want a different look. We want our scene to take place at dusk, so let's bring the sun around towards the front and down to negative one degrees elevation. Now, obviously our cloud has gone dark, so let's come back to the cloud settings for some color adjustment. First, in the color tab, let's give this a nice teal color To make it glow in the dark, come over to the Tweaks tab and pump the ambient settings all the way up to 50. I'm also going to uncheck Paper Top and Base. We'll take care of fading in a moment here. There's a couple other options you can play with for lighting, including messing with the environment light, the environment light tinting, and the sun glow amount for different looks you can get with this Aurora. Lastly, in the Quality tab, Bring the quality up to 1.25. I find that without extremely high quality settings, you tend to see a lot of grain in the lights. We'll also need some pretty high anti-aliasing in our final shot. Okay, we can do a test render, and we're starting to get the general idea. Next up, let's add some more vertical streaking. We'll do this with a power fractal. and we're going to stretch the noise vertically to produce streaks. I'm also going to give the noise a variation of two, which will give us more variation between large and small streaks. We'll use a multiply color node to combine this with our simple shape. This is starting to look better, but the edges are somewhat abrupt. To fix that, we'll add a distribution shader and use the altitude constraints to fade in the top of the aurora. Let's set this to 2000 with a fuzzy zone of 1000. And we're going to use Y as the altitude key. If we multiply this in, we should get a nice fade in from the top. The last thing we'll take a look at here is making it so the streaks fade out a little bit towards the bottom of the lights. This one is a little bit trickier. Basically what we're going to do is make two copies of the lights, one with streaks and one without streaks, and blend them together by altitude. First, let's create another distribution shader, and we'll set a minimum altitude constraint this time. Next, we're going to create a merge shader. Into the first input, we'll plug the fractal warp shader without streaks. Into the second input, we'll put the version that's been multiplied with the streaks. And finally, we'll plug our distribution shader into the mix controller port. This will let our distribution shader control where the streak version shows through, giving us less streaks at the base of the lights and more as we transition upwards. And there we have a basic Aurora Borealis. At this point, you can add more simple shapes or use power fractals as masks instead. 
You can also add more cloud layers, giving them different colors or brightnesses, fading them in and out at different altitudes. Go crazy and make yourself a nice arctic sky.